impressed him. North Dakota has not lost a game in which goaltender Jake Brandt has gotten the decision. The sophomore from Rozo is 5-0 with three shutouts this year. The last two shutouts coming in succession. And Jake Brandt will return in goal tonight to try to get the sweep of the Wisconsin Badgers for the Fighting Sioux. Good evening to you from Engelstead Arena with Jeff Bradle, Pat Sweeney. So happy you're with us for the rematch between the Sioux and the Badgers here on WDAZ and the North Dakota Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Well, Jeffrey, only, what, four goaltenders have ever posted consecutive shutouts in UND history. Jake Grant joining that elite club last night, and Dean Blaze will stay with him tonight. Yeah, we talked about it in many of the games prior to tonight about how Coach Blaze really had to find a go-to guy, and Jake Brand apparently is the guy that's really stepped up uh, out playing the other goaltenders for UND with his uh, fourth goalie to post a consecutive shutout, three shutouts this season. So, I mean, hey, maybe Coach Blaze has found his guy early in the season, so knock on wood. He did not allow a lot of rebounds in the first period last night, and that was a big key. Meanwhile, Wisconsin, which is looking for goals, will make a change in goal with Scott Kamatoff. Well, the difference between Kabatov and the goalie last night, Brookler, is Kabatov's a senior. But, you know, take a look at the number of games he's played during his four-year career. Only 27 games. So, although he's a senior in school, games-wise, he could be just a freshman. So, again, it's going to be a, like last night. It's going to come down really to a goaltender duel. And as you saw in that stat, he has never lost to the Sioux. Let's check the WCHA standings coming into this one. Colorado College with a four-point lead on Denver. Then it's St. Cloud State, five back. UND moves up to a fourth-place tie with Minnesota. Minnesota Duluth with last night's win. Then it's Mankato with five points. Wisconsin tied for eighth with Michigan Tech. And Alaska Anchorage at three points apiece. And now we take you down to the ice here at Engelstead Arena for our national anthem. The University of North Dakota Goliards and the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave Dakota 10 and 1 overall against Wisconsin 5 and 6 and we'll have the rematch next here on WDAZ. This presentation Sponsors of this telecast include Acme Electric, Tool Crib of the North, Bemidji Visitors and Convention Bureau, Brammer, Columbia Mall, Dahlstrom Motors, David D. Dusak, Attorney at Law, Drummer's Diesel, Jarrell's Sports Center, Global Wireless, Hanson Ford, Italian Moon, Kelly's Bar, North Dakota Association for the Disabled, PS Doors, Polar Communications, Radioactive Car Audio, UND Alumni Association, Valley Truck, Whitey's, and the Workforce Training Partnership of Lake Region State College and the University of North Dakota. Red 
meets green as Wisconsin visits North Dakota here for game two of this WCHA series. And as we mentioned, Jake Brandt, the sophomore out of Roseau, Minnesota, back in goal at goals against average with the two shutouts in a row now down to 1.82 and the save percentage at .905. And you want it in the 90s. Dean Blaze with his 14th career win against the Badgers last night. He said, I know Brandt will give up a goal sooner or later. We just don't know when, and they hope it's not tonight. Scott Kabatoff making a rare Saturday start. Usually this season they've been playing him on Friday, but Mike Eves shuffling the deck a little bit here tonight. The former North Star and Calgary Flame in his first year with Wisconsin. Mike Schmidt is our referee. The assistants are Rick Looker and Kyle Bergren. Wisconsin leads the series with 70 wins. The Sioux have 49. There were nine ties. And last night, UND got its fourth shutout in the series. Alex Levitt's line is out for Wisconsin with Rennie Bork and Eric Jensen at the wings. Mark Jackson and Tom Gilbert at defense. For North Dakota, David Lundbaum centering Kevin Spiewak and James Mason with David Hale and Andy Schneider at defense to start it off. Wisconsin in red. North Dakota in white. Just underway here as Gilbert fires it in. It's picked off by Andy Schneider ahead to Kevin Spiewak. Has Lundbaum with him, but Jackson puts him against the boards. Centering pass won't go. James Mason puts it right through Lundbaum. And picking it up, Mark Jackson, the senior out of St. Albert, Alberta. Off to Alex Levitt, the scoring leader for the Badgers with one goal and nine assists. Icing is the call, and it's time now to check the Hanson Ford keys to the game for UND, Jeff. Boy, as we always say in all the games, get a good start in the first period. Take the body and get your feet moving. Secondly, don't allow any second and third chances. Brant will make the first save. Defenseman got to clean out in front of the net. Take the game to them. Put the pressure on them. Beat them to the puck. Win the small battles. And lastly, as we mentioned in the pregame, Jake Brant, a pretty big, important player in this game tonight. I think it's the first time this year. As the shot just goes wide for Ryan Hale. If I'm not mistaken, the first time this year, the one Sioux goalie has started three games in a row. Comes out to Matt Green. Plays it back. Now Mike Perfect picking it up, trying to get away from John Crawl. John Eichelberger on his back as Rory McMahon takes control. Back to Ryan Hale, the Sioux captain. Plays it to Perfect. Mike Perfect, number 19, tries to muscle off a defender, backhands it. Oh! Kabatov had to be alert there as it went through everyone. Hale now. His backhand was deflected and taken out by A.J. Degenhart. Stopped at the line by Green. Gets it back on the poke check. Ahead to Rory McMahon. Gets by one defender, but he has to catch up to the puck. Hale is in front. Now Ryan Hale. Trying to get the puck away from Pete Talifus, number 15. And Wisconsin takes it out. Number 19, Ryan McMurchie having trouble getting around line Weber. But the Badgers clear the zone nonetheless, and both teams change on the fly. Nick Fure has it picked off. Here's Talifus, drops it back. A shot on goal by McMurchie, and Grant makes the save. And let's get the replay on this one. Play good. Give and go by Wisconsin, creating a good scoring opportunity. But the key to this shot is look at Brandt making the save, covering it up, not allowing the rebound to pop out with Heisler right there on the doorstep. You know, when you watch a goaltender, Pat, we've seen over the year, that's the first couple shots upon him, how confidently they handle the puck that really sets the tone for the rest of the game. Each team with one shot on goal thus far. Talifus again puts it into McMurchy, off to the open man. Dolka tries to catch up with it, and Zach Parisi pokes it out. Zach Parisi centering Brandon Bochanski and Jason Norderman. The second straight game that combination is played together. This is Norderman. Schneider breaking. Trying to get it to him and hit a Badger. Parisi fans on it. And we've got a penalty coming up here against Wisconsin. And let's check the Hanson Ford keys to the game for Wisconsin. It's pretty easy, Jeff Riddle. Well, Coach Mike, he's a new first-year head coach <laughs> for the Wisconsin Badgers. Obviously, you look what he wants to do is put the puck in the net and looking at the score sheets. Uh, boy, Wisconsin has only scored, what, one goal in the last three games? And uh, 
you sit back and say, boy, you know, that's pretty bad. But when you look at UND, they've scored three in the last two. But as you said last night, hey, a win is a win. And when you come out on the winning side of those type of statistics, hey, you look like the hero. But when you come out on the bad side, you're the zero. And obviously, Coach Mike Eves wants to put the puck in the net tonight. Ryan Fahey is penalized for Wisconsin. Two minutes for interference, and this will come back on icing with 1.45 to go on the penalty to Ryan Fahey. Now, number 26 there, Jason Noderman. Point on the line with Zach Breezy and Bochinski. You're going to get a lot of scoring opportunities. The big test for him is whether he's going to be in the scoring position with his body, with the stick on the ice, and when he does get those opportunities, is he going to put the puck in the net? Last night he had a couple good scoring opportunities, just wasn't able to capitalize on it. The Sioux have Norderman, Spiewak, McMahon up front. Schneider, the defenseman, cutting to the net. He's at the point with Chris Lineweber. A minute 27 to go on the North Dakota power play. Schneider kicks it on the stick, and it deflects to the far side and outside the line. Chris Lineweber has to reorganize the attack. Neither team able to score on the power play last night. Here's Norderman wheeling in on his backhand, trying to fight off Jackson. Still maneuvering. Norderman off to Brian or David Lundbaum, that is. Norderman across. Here's Fewer in front, blocked by Tom Gilbert, the freshman, and set down the ice. Gilbert, the highest scoring freshman defenseman in the WCHA, one goal and eight assists. I knew I'd call David Lundbaum Brian once this year. I hope that's the end of it. Here's David Lundbaum. Bochetsky back to Lundbaum. Walking right in. Ooh, oh, Bochetsky tries to step it in, and they score! Well, Coach Blaze wanted to get at on the scoreboard early in this game, and they have a real nice power play goal. Watch the give and go here in the corner. Comes back to Bochinski, and watch what he does. He tucks it in real tight. Kabatov just not able to get his skate to the goal post. Apparently he did make the first save. But number 20, I believe, Mason, right there, going through the crease, getting the rebound opportunity. Hey, when you're a defenseman, you cannot let players like that skate right through the, the blue goal crease trying to get rebounds. That's Mason's fifth goal of the season, giving the Sioux a big one-goal lead here with four minutes into the first period. James Mason got an empty net goal last night. Gets the Sioux on the board tonight with his fifth of the year. And with that goal... Megan Smith of Grand Forks wins a $10 Columbia Mall gift certificate in our Sioux Goal giveaway. For your chance to win, sign up at the Columbia Mall Center Court Service Center. Lundbaum and Bochensky should get the assists on Mason's fifth at 3.59, and here's Parisi. Bochensky trailing. Zach Parisi bumped off the play, comes back to Parisi, back in the net in front to Schneider, and he put it wide. Now uh, here's Bochensky on the back end again with a shot. It's Noderman and Kamatov makes the save. You're watching the Sioux on DAZ. Fifteen thirty-one to go. That's the first power play goal for either team in this series. James Mason out of Bismarck. And the scoring officially now, as we gave it to you, Mason from Lundbaum and Bochensky. Here is Hale with a long shot blocked in front of him. Jolka can't clear it. Lineweber a shot. Whoa! Kabatov has it in his equipment, I think. And he didn't realize it was there. It was in the top of his right pad. Boy, that's a coaching coach's a coach's nightmare when you see your goaltender make the save. And then look behind him, look his <laughs> right shoulder, then his left shoulder, not knowing where the puck is at. You no, know, you contrast that with Jake Brandt with the first shot put on him, stopping it confidently. Boy, now you know what gives coaches gray hair. Sue with a 5-1 to one margin in shots on goal. Line Weber after it with Nick Lakari, 31, picking it up. Joe Simon, number 18, who's taking the spot of Adam Burrish tonight. Sue also making a lineup change. Brian Kennedy, sophomore right winger from Alaska, is in in place of Ryan Connolly. Here's Lakari losing the puck, but it comes to a teammate. Brent Gibson now, number 11 with it. La 
Lakari being tied up by Lineweber. Lakari tries it again, but the pile pokes the puck over to the corner. Now Jackson puts it right through everybody, and Kennedy cannot clear it out. Held in by Gilbert. His shot is blocked. Gilbert again. That shot is blocked by Colby Genoway, and coming out is Kabatov. They're trying to catch the Sioux in a line change. Jackson drops it back to A.J. Degenhardt. Big Brad Winchester collides with Matt Jones. Jones broke his stick. Jolka clears it into the Sioux in. Now North Dakota working it ahead, but it comes back into the Sioux end. Retrieving is Matt Green, freshman out of Grand Ledge, Michigan. This will be icing against the Sioux with 13.37 to go. Boy, looking at the broken sticks on the ice, it reminds me of last night. Boy, at one time there was uh, three broken sticks on the ice, <laughs> and the play kept on going without a whistle, and they were laying parts laying all over the ice. And, you know, with those new uh, composite sticks uh, made of fiberglass and all this other fancy stuff, they seem not to hold up as well as the old wood Christian Brothers hockey stick. So what you're saying is you prefer old-time hockey. <laughs> like, old time like hockey. Eddie, like Eddie Shore, Shore. Toe Blake, Dick Clapper. Those, like guys those guys were the greats. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Taking the pass from McMahon. Shot on goal, and Kabatov sticks that aside. Perfect being bothered from behind by McMurchie. And down the ice it goes. Icing will be the call again with 13 14 to go. I want to mention Wisconsin forward Dan Besser, a 22-year-old junior, is not here on the trip. He broke three bones in his left hand in the second series of the year, but you have to tip your hat to Dan Besser just for coming back. He was diagnosed with lymphoma this past summer, had many radiation treatments just before the season. Team doctors said at the time that they thought he would make a full recovery, and indeed he did recover to play, but on the shelf now with an injury, and we wish Dan Besser all the best. Rennie Bork drops it in and gets a few shoves from Schneider after the fact. Fahey holding the zone. Bork tries to pry it loose. It comes out in front off the stick of Schneider, who controls the rebound. Seven to one, the Sioux leading in the shots on goal department. And of course, one nothing on the scoreboard on the power play goal by James Mason. Well, they tried to get it to Spiewak, and it was cut off by Alex Levitt, the scoring leader for the Badgers, with one goal and nine assists. Sue come back with a long drive by Lundbaum, gloved by Kabatov. Kabatov, a senior from Strathcona, Alberta. Bouncing puck comes back. Lineweber has it taken away by Talapas, puts it in front. Catching up with it was McMurchie, tried to center it, and Heisler couldn't get a shot away. He was turned around. Ochetsky. Retreats and the Sioux try to clear it again. They do this time with Bochetsky Parisi breaking. Bochetsky a shot off the stick of Kabatov. Bochetsky still working down there. Here's Norderman, centers it. Bochetsky had his back to the goal, couldn't get a shot away, and Kabatov covers it. 11.51 to go. You're watching the Sioux on WBAZ. Boy, the best goal scorers out there can shoot off any foot, left foot, right foot. That doesn't matter where the puck is. Good crisp shot by Bochinski. You know, he doesn't have to wind up and take the big body swing to try to get the puck. Just a quick wrist shot. He puts a lot of mustard on the puck. Brandon Bochinski leads the Sioux in goals with 11. Parisi, the leading scorer, got his 10th goal last night. 23 points for Zach Parisi. Is McMahon collides loudly on the far side with Winchester. <laughs> McMahon lost his stick trying to poke it away and heads to the bench. Now Perfect tries to clear the zone. He can't. Degenhardt slaps it right back. And Wisconsin will send out five fresh players. Hale around one man. Ryan Hale. Sends it wide of the target. Gilbert can't clear it. Now Joe Simon will try it over for Jackson. Mark Jackson pumps it in and in to get it. Joe Simon, the Michigan native. David Hale around. Mason will get to it. 
Now Schneider clears the zone. Simon picks it up. Ooh. Tom Gilbert right in front of his net, pressured by Lundbaugh. Simon across the line and puts it wide of the Sioux goal. Wisconsin not getting much going offensively here in the early going. The shot's 8-1 to one in favor of UND as we'll face it off here with 10.22 to go. In our first intermission, our guest will be Tom Clifford, the former president of UND, who today, here in the lobby of this arena, received the North Dakota Rough Rider Award from Governor John Hoven, the highest honor the state can bestow. And Jeff Bradle, I know you and I would be hard-pressed to find anyone more deserving. Well, I remember, well, I don't know, we got 15 seconds here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> go hey, ahead. We'll, we'll go back to, I'll tell you what, when I uh, in injured my shoulder my sophomore year and had a couple surgeries and damage to my arm, which prevented me from playing anymore, uh, Clifford was the first one that called me into his office and uh, asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, well, maybe medical school. And he, he says, well, you're not passing biology. <laughs> And he says, how about law school? And I said, absolutely. And uh, lo and behold, I got uh, admitted. And, and uh, boy, you're talking almost uh, 15 years, 20 years ago now. So I'm very grateful for what he's done for me and my family. His door was always open. And he still does a lot for this university. Here's Mason putting it in Spiewak skates. And Kevin didn't see it. Taken away by Lundbaum. Shot deflected by Fahey into the corner. And the lead pass now to Rennie Bork. Big drive off of Green. And it'll come to Jason Noterman. Number 11, Zach Parisi to Bochetsky. Bochetsky a shot, stick save. And Parisi was held up on the near board. Nobody there in position for a rebound. Sue hold it in. Jackson bumped by Bochetsky. Noterman in there causing problems. Look at Parisi trying to dig it loose, but carrying on is Jake Heisler, number 10. He loses it to Parisi. And the fans applauding this hustle. Here's a chance for Noterman, one man back. Noterman a shot, Cabot top the save, and the rebound controlled by Talifus. Kept in by Fuhr. Shot right on, Cabot lets it go. Noterman and Jackson still muscling down in the corner. Poked loose by Parisi. Now Norderman loses it to Talifus. Pete Talifus, his dad, Dean, played for the Badgers way back when. Former coach at Alaska Anchorage. Sue with 11 shots on goal now to Wisconsin's one. James Mason with the only goal of this game on the power play at 3.59 of period one. Fewer starts the Sue back again. It comes to Kennedy. Back to filling. Kennedy has shot. Kamatop is there. He doesn't see the rebound. Shot by Fuhr. And somehow that is stopped. And play is called by a high stick. Well, I think that was the right call. But boy, what tic tac toe play by the Sioux leading up the ice here. Boy, just classic give and go passes. And Kennedy right there gets the puck, but you'll see Quinn filling number nine. See him jump up, stick in the air. Actually, the call was before then, and that was a correct call. But boy, what give and go, tic tac toe plays. Now keep your eye on number nine. The rebound will come. Kennedy lets it rip right there. Quinn filling hits the puck. Mike Schmidt, Johnny in the spot to call it high sticking. But again, you have to give the Sioux a lot of credit for where they're finding the open man, especially in the offensive zone, cycling the puck down low. The Sioux just bombarding the net here now with a 14 to one lead in shots on goal. You have to tip your hat to the Wisconsin goalies. 7.53 to go, you're watching the Sioux on DAZ. Coming up during the Acme Electric Tool Crib of the North first intermission, we'll bring you Laws of the Game, sponsored by David D. Dusek, attorney at law. A feature designed to help you understand more about hockey rules and strategies. Tonight's topic is offside. And David Haxtall will be filling us in on that. Action in the Wisconsin end, as it has been for most of this game. Ryan McMurchy starts the charge, but the Badgers lose the puck. And we've got play called here with 722. 
And I'm not sure what happened there, Jeff. Do you? Well, it looks like uh, assistant referee Rick Looker was breaking up UND player and a Wisconsin Badger player. But all I can think of. Yeah, I'd... There you see the shots on goal. Wow. And Baron Brookler played about as well as you can play. He only gave up the one goal. Of course, the second goal was an empty netter, but made 30 saves last night. Kabakov has stopped all but one of the 14 Sioux shots tonight. Wisconsin trying to keep it in the zone. They can't. Spiewak pokes it down and chases after it, but it's icing, and back it will come with 6.48 to go. We welcome our viewers on WDAZ tonight and those of you watching on cable on the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Also a special hi to Bill and Orine Gowan watching tonight in Mesa, Arizona via satellite with the crew at O'Sullivan's. We are told they don't miss a game, so we are appreciative of their viewership. Mid-Continent Cable on the Fighting Sioux Network along with Schober Cable, Cable One. Here's Noterman breaking in with Pochensky, a shot right on. Kabatov is there and the net comes off the mooring. But when you can't put the, the pass tape to tape, bounce it off the boards like Zach Parisi did to number 26, Jason Noterman. Again, he gets a good shot off on the goaltender for Wisconsin, Kabatov. No, Jason Oderman's getting some good hard shots. The unfortunate part is they're hitting the goaltender right in the pads or in the in the chest. He's got to adjust that aim just slightly. 15 to one the shots now, and Mike Eaves does not appear to be a happy man. Coach that U.S. national development team the last few years. And if you missed our telecast last night, he also coached Zach Parisi at Faribault Shattuck. And with last year's junior team, Parisi puts that one wide. Last year's uh, 18 and under national team. Also on the Fighting Sioux Sports Network, we don't want to forget Polar Communications at CSI Cable of Jamestown at Valley City. Happy you're all joining us tonight for Sioux Hockey. Parisi to Noterman on the tape. Noterman stops, that's blocked. Parisi the rebound and it hit the outside of the post. Penalty coming up here. A hooking call, we'll tell you about it when we come back. You're watching The Sioux on WDAZ and the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Well, another good scoring opportunity. Nice, clever move there by Jason Noterman. Watch the rebound come right on the stick of Zach Parisi. Had that lower corner just sighted right in there, and Kabatov made yeah. a nice big save. At first, I thought it hit the post. He got the skate on to knock it away. Brian Fahey in the box for the second time in this period, two for hooking. At 14.06, and North Dakota scored on the last penalty. James Mason getting that goal, so we'll see if the Sioux can pad that lead. The Sioux have been stuck on one nothing at home for <laughs> the last couple of nights. Last night, a late empty net goal made it 2 nothing. Comes outside the line, and Schneider has to wait for his teammates to get back on side. Norderman across, carrying away. McMahon walking right in, and he puts it wide. I think Gilbert got a piece of that. Puck flips, and where did it go? Well, I think they're still trying to find out where that puck did go. I don't know. Is it in somebody's equipment, or I didn't see any fans scurrying for a puck? <laughs> it just disappeared. <laughs> Now, Wisconsin has a pretty decent penalty kill, only allowing their opponents uh, 21 percent. A little high, not bad. UND is shooting about 19 percent effective on the power play thus far this season. That will kill off some time. We're down to a minute and a half to go on the Fahey penalty. Breaking in is Spiewak with Noterman and McMahon up front. Kevin Spiewak, a native of Illinois. Let's it go. Kabatov loves that one with the left hand. Well, when you shoot that sh 
shot from the umbrella from the side like that. You have to make sure you have a guy standing in front of the goaltender blocking his view or have a couple forwards sitting on the side of that trying to get the rebound. Otherwise, any goaltender of average capability is going to be able to make a save like that pretty easily and readily all the time. Well, Chensky tried to weave in, and that got broken up, and sending it down the ice is John Eichelberger. Fifty-six seconds to go on the North Dakota man advantage. Parisi wheeling in, centers it, broken up at the defense, and it bounces right back to Kabatov. Mason was tied up. We've got some shoving after the whistle. Now well, Blachensky went through the goal crease looking for the rebound and gave Kabatov a little shot. You'll see it through here. Nice play by Parisi trying to find Noderman. The puck bounced right, right out on the Sioux player stick. And watch number seven Blachensky going through the crease. Wisconsin defenseman taking a little exception to that. James Mason got his second power play goal of the year earlier in this period. He's on this line on the power play with Parisi and Bocheski. But the Badgers clear it. McMurchy and Wisconsin will send out some fresh penalty killers as Tom Gilbert and Jake Heisler hop off the bench. Alex Levitt also up front. Here's Parisi. Number 11 banks it around. Mason is checked. Heisler clears it. And we're down to 20 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty to Fahey. Lung bumps somehow gets it across the line with Rennie Bork all over him. Bork from his knees gets it down the ice, and that should kill it. Two seconds, one, and Fahey steps out of the box right now. UND one for two on the power play tonight. This will be icing against the Sioux. 338 to go. Coming up next week, Sioux hockey will be seen on the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. That's cable. The series against Minnesota State, Mankato, and North Dakota next Friday and Saturday, 7 o'clock each night. Channel 23 in the greater Grand Forks area. Channel 6 in Devil's Lake, if I'm not mistaken. And it will be on the very channel that you're watching if you are watching outside the WDAZ viewing area. But uh, as they bring this one back for icing, I want to remind you it will not be on WDAZ next week, but on cable on the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Channel 24 in Fargo. Okay. For Valley City, Jamestown, Bismarck. Yeah. Hey, you make sure you contact your uh, cable providers and urge them to continue showing the UND hockey game and football, basketball, etc. And tell your friends. I mean, word of mouth is the best. Tell your friends what channel it's on in your area. Wisconsin. Getting the shot away there was Eric Jensen, number 26. Quinn Filling, the Mida native, over to Genoway, who gets it back to the Badger line. Sent back in by Jackson, and this will be icing against the Badgers. So, little case of icing itis here. 18 to 1, the shots on goal now in favor of North Dakota. My goodness. Now, number two, Matt Green there, the big 6'2, 220 pound defenseman. Second round draft pick in the NHL last summer. Highest penalty minutes on the team for this season. <laughs> Big, strong, tough, mean player. We've got one of the most penalized teams in the league here in North Dakota against one of the least penalized teams in Wisconsin. As we have three minutes to go in the opening period, don't forget Tom Clifford, our guest, during the first intermission, the recipient of the Rough Rider Award today from Governor John Hoven. In the lobby here at Engelstead Arena. McMahon tried to dump it. And the stuff attempt didn't work. Back come the Badgers with Brad Winchester. Bouncing puck. Finally stopped by McMahon. Winchester having a little battle with Schneider over on the far side. Now Schneider gives a shove to Pete Talifa. Or uh, A.J. Degenhardt, excuse me. Now Degenhardt flattens perfect. 
And the frustration mounts here. Play called with 220 to go. Boy, big Brad Winchester, 6'5", 200 pound senior for Wisconsin, number eight. He went out there and laid the wood on a couple of the UND players. But boy, when you're a senior and you're that big physical type player, you got to get out there and exert your presence on the ice. He didn't do it last night, but he sure did it that shift. The guy like that needs to be doing that every time he jumps on the ice. Not sometimes, but every time. Norderman flutters it in as the Sioux presses. Parisi puts it to Bochensky, and he fanned on it. Joe Simon clears it. It gets past Lakari. Hustling after it is Jones. No icing on his back is Brent Gibson. Freshman out of Calgary. One of eight freshmen in the Badger lineup this weekend. They keep digging after it. Gibson now it squirts loose to Parisi. Off the boards. Too far for Noterman. And icing will be the call with a minute 38 to go. Wisconsin already a winner today in football. Defeating the Gophers 49 to 31. Brooks Bollinger, the senior from Grand Forks Central. 6 of 12 passing, 135 yards and a touchdown. Also ran for 121 yards and another TD. Wisconsin 7 and 6 for the year and that victory was needed to go to a bowl game and the Gophers are 7 and 5 and I'm sure they'll be in a big bowl as well. <laughs> that was Brooks uh, final and last game at home yep. as a uh, Badger quarterback. Boy where did the time go there. Ohio State beat Michigan 14 to 9 Buckeyes 13 and 0 now and they're going to the national championship game. Here's David Lundbaum from his knees sets it up back for Schneider but he had it blocked by Heisler and back come the Badgers Simon but it's offside Talifus across the line. Hey don't tell anybody Pat but uh, the reason why I knew that was Brooks last game I was watching the Gophers and Badgers in a sport. Don't say it too loud football game. Well I watched part of that today yeah. Why not I mean I watched a lot of it. <laughs> Talking about Brad Winchester, the 6'5 uh, left winger. When he when he's out on the ice, he has to play tough and mean. You look back in the Sioux history with Gary Eads and the Commodore. When you've got that kind of size and big strong, you have to be out doing that every shift. Of course, the most amazing story is Jake Caulfield played one game for oh, UND. Yeah. Wound up having a long career in the NHL. As just what you're saying, one of those big Bruisers. Here's Fahey, defenseman way in deep. McMahon tries to clear it and it gets behind Gilbert. Ryan Hale couldn't break it away and now it comes to perfect. This is Hale, final half minute of the period. Right on and Kabatov has that one. Jake Caulfield was a, well, well, look at the replay here. Well, a good shot here by. Ryan Hale again right on Cabotop. If you haven't heard that story, Jake Caulfield was a football yep. player here at UND. Had a neck injury and was advised not to play football, so he tried out for the hockey team. Didn't look like he'd ever get a chance to play, and then there was a brawl somewhere, and about five guys got suspended. So Jay got his big chance and got to play a game at home, but that was his one and only Sioux game. And his name is now on the Stanley Cup. Three seconds, two. Here's Parisi. Puts it in front. Wachinski couldn't tap it in. It was 1983. Was it that long ago? Yep. Wow. And Parisi and Rennie Bork having some conversation after the fact. Jay had played football for Hibbing Junior College. Also played hockey and was recruited to come to UND as a junior football player and injured his neck. Was going to be a high draft pick in the National Hockey League and in injured his neck the trial for the hockey yeah, team. Yeah. Boy, that guy was just one massive oh, muscle. He was. And a good guy, too. He, he was. A good guy indeed. One to nothing. North Dakota leads on a power play goal by James Mason. Assist to Lundbaum and Bochensky at 359. Two penalties in the period, both to Wisconsin's oh, Ryan Fahey in North Dakota, nice. one of two on the power play. The shots on goal, 19 for North Dakota, one for Wisconsin. And we'll be back with our first intermission guest, 
Former UND President Tom Clifford, Rough Rider Award winner as of late this afternoon. And our laws of the game. It's all coming your way right after this. You're watching Sioux Hockey on WDAZ. Welcome back to the first intermission sponsored by Acme Electric Tool Crib of the North. And it is one to nothing in favor of the North Dakota Fighting Sioux after one. Time now for Laws of the Game, brought to you by David D. Dusak, attorney at law, a feature designed to help you understand more about hockey rules and strategy. Tonight we talk about offsides with Sioux assistant coach Dave Haxtell. With the rule of offsides, the player is not allowed to advance over the attacking blue line before the puck. If this does happen, the whistle will be blown and a face-off comes outside the attacking blue line. Thank you, David Haxtell, and now it's our pleasure to welcome the former president of the University of North Dakota and the latest recipient of North Dakota's highest honor, the Rough Rider Award, Tom Clifford. Uh, just tell us your thoughts on this great day to have Governor Hoven make that presentation here to you at Engelstead Arena this afternoon. Well, of course, it was an enormous surprise to me, but I'll tell you, I, would, I can't tell you how much I'm thrilled. It's a, it's a great honor. It's an honor that I accept with a lot of humility because in anything like this, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of people contributing to it. And so I thank the governor and everybody that selects it, but I thank all the people that made all the opportunities possible, but more importantly, enabled us to cash in on the opportunities. You did make a point to say that, Tom, about uh, the opportunity. You, you never would have gotten this if, it, if someone hadn't given you an opportunity, and I think that uh, philosophy typified your administration here. That's right. You've got you've got Many people have a lot of talent, but they never get the chance to expose it. And so I, I was very fortunate, and I'm very grateful. Boy, looking back uh, over the number of years you were at this uh, fine college, what, uh, give us one of your recollections or memories of uh, one of the big sports things that really comes to your mind. Well, I, you know, I really think it isn't hockey. Okay. It was uh, last year when we won the NCAA championship, that last minute of football. <laughs> I'll tell you, I watched the hundreds of football games and hundreds of basketball games, and there have been great thrills, and hockey's produced a lot of them. But that absolutely was a high point. That, that set my heart on fire. I was there too, and I still can't believe they pulled that off. No, I can't either. <laughs> and uh, the combination of things that made it possible are just incredible. You know, coaching mistakes on the other side, execution on our side. But what a wonderful victory. And that's just typical of uh, the same tradition that permeates hockey and everything else. I can remember the first win we had, you know, the, the, uh, when we beat M uh, Michigan. I couldn't believe it, you know, and uh, that was a long time ago. But then the other one, I think we've had a lot of great ch uh, championships in that. But I, I have to admit that that first one was probably uh, as, as exciting as any because I knew all the players, and it just was some, uh, a goal we had to attain. And uh, it was just marvelous. Let me ask you, Tom, about uh, non-sports uh, issues here. Uh, you, had, you have had a long association with UND, 50-some years, if I'm not mistaken. What, what uh, are some of the highlights you look at uh, just in, in non-athletic uh, endeavors? Well, you know, they asked me what I remembered most and what I liked most, and I think it's, uh, I, I like helping people. And it gave you a chance to do it, but more or less it gave me the authority to do it, you know, not, not just talk about it. So I like that. But there are just countless things. I think the establishment of the medical school. When we sat down in, a, in the, my office at the Tromley Hall and wrote the first letters to apply for a four-year medical school, it was a giant step. And the Board of Higher Education was marvelous about it. And look, look what we have today. The other one was when uh, we set up the uh, aviation program. We take just a wonderful program and worldwide renowned, uh, attracts thousands of students here. But more importantly, it's given people a chance to fly and uh, do it with, a, with an expert back. Wonderful thing. When you look 
back at the uh, the coaches that have coached various sports here at University of North Dakota. What uh, what one really steps uh, really sticks out in your mind as uh, really a leadership in in the community and, and for the sport that he or she was a coach with? Well, that's hard for me to choose because we've had a lot of good coaches. But I think the one that embodied most of that was uh, was probably Fitch. Uh, you know, he, he really got out there and worked, but, you know, all of them in their way. David Gunther, what a, what a marvelous job he did. What a job Barry Thornicraft did. You know, I just think of all these guys, and I, I'm not going to... Besides, I could go down and give you a great mark on each one of them. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you, Gino Gasparini did a great job. And, of course, I think uh, Blaze is probably the best hockey coach in the country. So we've been lucky. You know, we've had some great leadership. And uh, you take those guys, Bobby, uh, May, you know, and that. he They always said he gave the greatest pregame speech in the history. <laughs> so uh, I just think it's all going back and... He, you know, when Fido started, it, well, you know, he uh, he uh, he didn't have a great knowledge of coaching, but he had a great heart, and he had a great uh, will to win, and he could skate like a demon, and he inspired kids. So we've been lucky, awfully fortunate. I don't, uh, I can't think of any that really better than that. You know. Well, you, we see you around the rink here quite a bit, as well as university. What are you doing uh, with your time nowadays, since uh, you're now not the full-time president of this university? Well, what I, I, I'm chairman of the aerospace, and I'm also chairman of the REA. So I spend a lot of time at that, and uh, it's a uh, it, it's very satisfying. You know, we've got a lot of challenges, and and uh, that's what makes it great. This arena, superb, sublime, you know, yep. wonderful. The aerospace, nothing like it in the world. And we know now we're diversifying, thinking of new things with air traffic control, doing things like this, because ab initio training might have a little slump, but there's always something to step up to that. We're going into a lot of simulator training. We had the first simulator in air traffic control. We've got students here now from uh, Norway, and this weekend, or this week, we're getting a delegation of Meissen. So uh, that's pretty pretty much leaning toward uh, Nordic stuff with an Irishman, but as you know, that, <laughs> yes. uh, we've, got to, we've got to give him a chance. <laughs> hey, last, last thing, Tom, uh, I know you've received a lot of honors and awards. Uh, is, is there any way you can rank this one for me today, the Rough Rider Award? Well, in North Dakota, this has to be the top award. You know, they, you get a lot of them, and some of them are very meaningful, and all of them are very special, but this one is uh, means a lot to me because I love North Dakota, I stayed in North Dakota. I wanted to be in North Dakota, and I did stay. And I got a, I got opportunities here. How can you beat that? Well, a lot of people are very thankful for what you've done to the state, the university, the city, the town. You name it. Uh, you're uh, you're a legend, and a lot of people are grateful for well, your contribution. I, I appreciate that, but the gratitude goes both ways. I'm enormously grateful for the opportunity you gave me and the opportunity to do something with it. Congratulations, Tom. Always a pleasure. Tom Clifford, okay. the latest recipient of the Rough Rider Award, and our hats are off to him and his family. Back with more from Engelstead Arena right after this. shop here at Engelstead Arena as we resume our first intermission Jeffrey the Sioux lead Wisconsin one to nothing on James Mason's power play goal his fifth of the season from Lundbaum and Bochanski well it's a lot of hard work and a lot of desire not to give up but you'll see Bochanski try to wrap one around here tuck it in tight on the short side but James Mason comes through the crease looking for a rebound and lo and behold there it is and he pops it in for his fifth goal of the season and his tenth point thus far the sophomore from Bismarck North Dakota his second power play goal at 359 we got to tell you what Tom Clifford said as we left the air there and went to the commercial he turns to us and said we should have more goals <laughs> <laughs> always a Sioux fan optimistic isn't he well, you know, uh, so many people said, so we have to talk more about Tom Clifford, just a class yeah. act. Uh, uh, so many people said so many nice things at the ceremony today. Tim O'Keefe, uh, now working for UND, said that you think of how many, of pe how many people whose lives have been affected by Tom Clifford. Scott Hennon said, you know, do you know anybody who doesn't like this guy? <laughs> He's just done so much for so many here. And uh, 
uh, a Langdon native, and he is right. He is North Dakota through and through. Boy, you know, you, you look, you, you know, we talked about Jeff Sauer when he left the WCHA coaching rank and the, you know, the history that uh, that left with him when he, you know, when he departed and retired from coaching. And you look at Tom Clifford and the history of what he knows about the University of North Dakota, the state and the coaches and the players from the first game till the game today. And it's just amazing. And, and, you know, you look through the, you know, I'll go back and look with regard to his, uh, you know, his tenure at hockey. You know, he hired Gino Gasparini in the mid-70s, which, which was not a popular That's choice right. and was highly criticized for that. But, boy, look what Coach Gasparini did for those many years. And, you know, and then when he t uh, departed, and, and now Gasparini's doing a great job in the USHL, and now Coach Blaze has taken over. And the, the legacy that he was able to establish with the people he put in place, the leaders and the leadership roles, and the effect that those people who he brought into the organization and into the athletic department and what, what effects they had in, on the players' lives and as well as others is remarkable. Amen to that. We'll be back with the second period right after this as Sioux Hockey continues here on WDAZ and the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Sioux Sports Network present MSU Mankato at UND November 29th and 30th. Available on these local cable systems. On the ice between periods, the University of North Dakota honored the recent Hall of Fame inductees. You saw Jim Archibald there just a moment ago. Also being inducted today, the 1947-48 team, the very first big-time Sioux hockey team, and the 1958-59 national champions. And Scott Hennon will be talking to many of those people on the post-game show tonight, so stay with us for that. End of one, it's Minnesota trailing Michigan Tech one to nothing. And Duluth has a one or a two to nothing lead on St. Cloud State after one period. Right here it's one to nothing, North Dakota after one. We go with period two. It comes down to Tom Gilbert, swats it out to the red line, and David Hale has it picked off by Brent Gibson. Brings the Badgers in, the long shot handled by Brant. Oh, Lakari went hard into the corner with David Hale and a penalty coming up on North Dakota. Right off the bat here, 21 seconds in, North Dakota's first penalty of the game. Boy, one way you can really stop momentum on your side is to Get a penalty and sit in the sin bin and allow the other team just to rattle off some shots on your goaltender early in the second period with UND giving Wisconsin a good opportunity to get back into this game. Shots uh, in the first period, Pat, remarkable. 19 for UND, one for Wisconsin. And look at Wisconsin with only one power play goal in WCHA competition as Fahey's shot is handled by Brandt. Boarding is the call against David Hale. And at 21 seconds, we're down to 155 on that penalty time. John Eichelberger up front here with A.J. Degenhart. And Brad Winchester for the Wisconsin power play. Fahey and Jackson are at the point. North Dakota off to a 10 and 1 start. The last team to do that was the 86 87 team, and they went on to a national championship. Here's Wisconsin with Brad Winchester. Degan Hart in front of the goal. They couldn't get it to him. It bounces back. Fahey one times it. That's blocked by the captain, Ryan Hale. Winchester, or excuse me, Eichelberger over to Winchester. That's number nine over to number eight. Winchester and Green go down. Now Eichelberger falls and gets it off, but Jackson's pass picked off. Oh, and Filling put it too far for Rory McMahon. Fifty seconds to go on the North Dakota penalty. And oddly enough, all the penalties tonight have been against players wearing number four. Fahey has two penalties for Wisconsin. David Hale, one for the Sioux. 
Alex Levitt directs it to the point for Tom Sawatsky. Jensen trying to get it to Levitt. Fuhrer dives to break it up. Levitt carries on, and that's poked away by Spiewak. 26 seconds to go on the Hale penalty. Puck hits traffic. And Bork can't handle it. It's cleared to the point. Sawatsky to Jensen. Back to Sawatsky. Here is Eric Jensen. Down low to Levitt. Alex Levitt out. And we've got a man in the crease. Stopping play with 17.48 to go and nine seconds left on the David Hale penalty. Well, UND doing a nice job keeping Wisconsin with the puck on the perimeter, not allowing them to penetrate in. Actually going down, blocking a good couple of good shots. Brian Hale right at the blue line, took one right in the shins to, to stop a good scoring opportunity by Wisconsin. Wisconsin already has two shots on goal in the second period. That's one more than they had in the entire first period. 19 to 3, the Sioux leading in that department. David Hale is out of the box. But here come the Badgers, four on two. Ryan McMurchie, stapled to the boards by David Hale. Now Talif is fighting for it. Parisi pries it loose, gives it to McMurchie. Goes through everybody, filling can't handle it, and carrying away is Bochinski off to Parisi. Parisi coming in. Gilbert on him, it's off Gilbert's stick. Bochinski crashing to the net. And nothing developed there. Here's Gilbert. Being bothered from behind by Bochinski. Ryan McMurchie over here for Brian Fahey. Off to Jake Heisler out of Bloomington Jefferson. Now Talifus has it stopped. Parisi breaks it up. Heisler carries on. The shot right on, and Grant stops that. Well, did you notice uh, who's on the left wing now? Pat with Parisi and Bochinski. Their old line mate, number nine, Quinn Filling. Again, uh, Jake Brandt comes up with a nice save. So I, I don't know whether that was just caused because of the killing the penalty or not, but I think that's something to follow here. And we will do that as Joe Simon faces off with Colby Genoway. Loose puck kicked by Lineweber. Comes out. That shot by Jackson is blocked. And the bounce comes all the way back to the Badger end. Well, yesterday was a big day for Sioux athletes named Brandt. Jake Grant got a 22 save shutout. Jeff Grant of the Sioux men's basketball team scored 25 points in the season opening victory over St. Martin at the Western Oregon Wolfpack Classic. And by the way, Western Oregon in the second game of that classic last night beat defending Division II champ Mesa State 70 to 69 on a shot at the buzzer. Western Oregon playing UND tonight in men's play and the Sioux women are at Hislop Sports Center playing Southwest State. Still waiting for a score on that game. That puck flies into the seat. 16.02 to go. You're watching the Sioux on WDAZ. With Jeff Bradle, Pat Sweeney at Engelstead Arena. As David Lundbaum waits for some repair work to be done to the ice here. Another full crowd. It's nice to see that. Anytime you uh, have these two schools meet up almost anywhere in the country, you're going to fill the facility. And since the Gophers don't visit Engelstead Arena this year, this becomes UND's big home rival for this season. The Sioux will be paying a visit to Minneapolis later on. This is game four of a 14 game Sioux homestand. Lundbaum with it, pops it up to Gilbert. Intercepted at the neutral zone by Schneider. And Wisconsin. Slow to get out of its zone. It comes to Winchester. Winchester taken down by David Hale. Talifus carries on in front. Eichelberger is denied at the doorstep. Badgers try it again. Winchester triggers it in, and Wisconsin makes a line change. Intercepted by Bork. Comes back to Levitt. Rennie Bork, number 23, the captain of the Badgers in this series. Jensen can't pull the trigger in front. Down goes Hale. Jensen still fighting for it with Lundbaum on him. Jackson gives it right to Lundbaum. And here's the lead pass. Perfect going in, but breaking it up nicely was Fahey. 
Fahey puts it through Jackson 11. Gets it outside the zone. Jensen shoves it across. Down goes Bork. And play stops here with 14.32 to go. And when they get in a little sloppy in their defensive zone, I think it was David Lumbaugh trying to make a fancy move in the slot area, doing the dipsy do, and the Wisconsin player picked his pocket and forcing Brant to come up with a big save. Kind of looks like a Mike Commodore there, doesn't it? <laughs> and how appropriate that the Sioux have a player named Green, one of the team's colors. Well, if Glenn White were still here, we'd have a quite a combination of green and white. Anyway, here's <laughs> Sioux Jones. Now Hale has it, goes off his stick. Wisconsin starts back the other way, but Hale, look at him work. Getting it back to the man, and he puts it wide. Good hustle there by Ryan Hale. He's got the puck again, and a penalty will be called, I think, against the Badgers as Brandt was skating to the bench. Yes. Holding, I think, is the call. On number five, Mark Jackson, who had, boy, I think it was Mike Perpich all tied up there on the door, on the doorstep there, and Schmidt had a call that. In fact, Jackson threw him down to the extent where the goal pulse and the goal net came off his borings, and good scoring opportunity now for the Sioux. 14 minutes, four seconds now remaining in the second period. Uh, you and you have an opportunity to go up 2-0 against the Badgers. Comes back to Nick Fuhr, his shot deflected by Simon. And the Badgers send it down the ice. 5.56 the time of the penalty to Jackson for holding. North Dakota, one for two on the power play tonight. That goal by James Mason, who's out there now wearing number 20. Mason, Bochensky, Parisi up front, Lundbaum and Fuhr at the points. Mason into Bochensky. Mason joins the fray. Parisi hustling after it, directs it out. Fuhr across for Lundbaum. Over to Bochensky, a shot. And I think Simon got a stick on that, and it winds up in the seats with a minute 17 to go on the North Dakota power play. Well, UND just needs to be a little more patient. Be calm with the puck. Don't try to rush it. There is another minute 17 left in the power play opportunity. You see Bochensky taking a tough angle shot there. Mason was in front. Freeze it to the right of the screen. Now the Sioux have Norderman McMahon and Spiewak up front with Lineweber and Schneider at the points. A.J. Degenhardt and Brad Winchester up front to kill it off for Wisconsin with Fahey and Gilbert at defense. Kevin Spiewak setting up with Noterman positioned in front. Now Lineweber goes way in deep and gets back to his defensive position. Spiewak over to Schneider. Spiewak down here for Noterman. 41 seconds to go. Lineweber puts it right on. Through traffic, Kabatov made that save, and the Badgers clear it. And Puck was hit by a high stick, according to referee Mike Schmidt. We've got 33 seconds to go on the penalty to that man right there, Mark Jackson. Well, the UND player number 10, <laughs> Roy McMahon, is going to be called for the high stick. I'll tell you why fans are laughing here. They're, they had a shot at Jackson, and they play Elvis singing, Are You Lonesome Tonight, <laughs> over the PA. So McMahon is in for high sticking. I'm sorry, I thought, was, I thought the puck was hit by a high stick. My mistake. 7.23 the time. So we're four on four here for the next 19 seconds. You know, Pat, the best one I've heard <laughs> when we played is when the referee would call a penalty and the band would play three blind mice. Oh, yeah. And that lasted about a game and a half before the WCHA put a kibosh to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jackson is out and Wisconsin has a man advantage for the next 122. Sue kill off some more precious seconds. We're down to one minute, 11 seconds to go on the McMahon penalty. Here's Gilbert flipping it in. 
Jones plays it off the plexiglass. He eludes Alex Levitt. That hit the stick of Rennie Bork. Badgers in there buzzing. Here's Jensen with Green on his back. Digging it loose. It's Levitt. 45 seconds to go on the Wisconsin man advantage. They pop it right up, and here's Fuhr. Or Green, that was, excuse me. 33 seconds to go on the Rory McMahon high sticking penalty. Wisconsin 0 of 1 on the power play tonight. Hale clears, but not out. Gilbert holds the zone. Comes back now to Jake Heisler. He's having trouble finding his feet. David Hale in there crashing, along with Schneider. 10 seconds left on the North Dakota penalty. Jackson coughs it right up. Here's a chance. David Lundba breaking in. David Lundba backhand. And that is sticked aside by Kabatov. The North Dakota penalty is over. 10.34 to go. You're watching the Sioux on DAZ. See a nice scoring opportunity here by number five, David Lumbum, short-handed, breaking down on a breakaway, and Mark Jackson, number five, the defenseman for the Badgers, takes a big hack at him, two minutes uh, slashing, giving the Sioux another power play opportunity. 9.26, the time of the penalty. Scott Kabatoff makes another save there. Sioux working around, Bochensky out to Lundbaum. That is blocked by Nick Lakari, and the freshman from Duluth, Minnesota, brings it back. And that takes more time off the clock. A minute 35 to go on the Jackson penalty. Parisi around Fahey. Zach Parisi, UND's leading scorer, and tied for number two scoring honors in the nation. James Mason hits the side of the net. And the Badgers clear it. Mason has the only goal tonight on a first period power play. North Dakota one for three on the power play for the game. Bochensky over to Mason. He's run off the play by A.J. Degenhart. John Kroll kind of stick somebody in the ribs there. <laughs> play comes to Fahey. Now Kroll, he can't dig it loose. It'll come over here for Brad Winchester. And it's outside the line. A.J. Degenhart. Lacrosse, Wisconsin native, comes in shorthanded. That's off Fuhr's stick, and up into the seats it goes with 40 seconds remaining on the Jackson penalty for Wisconsin and 9.13 to go in the middle period. Uh, Chris Lineweber had the daunting task of trying to stop Brad Winchester in his big frame crashing towards the net and did a nice job driving him to the goal post. Causing that big guy number eight to take the net off the boring. But 40 seconds left in the Sioux power play opportunity. There we see some of the more colorful spectators here at Engelstead Arena. Down to 33 seconds to go on the North Dakota man advantage. David Hale fires it in. Tom Sawatsky, another Duluth native, around the boards. David Hale holds it in, and the shot right in on Kabata, who stops play with 22 seconds left on the power play. You know, you got to time that shot to some to, to the extent that there's somebody standing in front blocking the goaltender. Norderman was just about in position. Well, that's the real key when the puck goes back to the defenseman on the power play is to make sure you create havoc in front of the goaltender. Man out, Spiewak in to take the draw. It comes back to David Hale. 17 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty to Jackson. David Hale in front, McMahon, the rebound, they score! Spiewak! Well, there you go. David Hale was a little patient, waited. Now watch number 10, McMahon, standing right in front of the net. Good low shot, McMahon tips it. Spiewak right on the doorstep where he's supposed to be. Wide open net. No hesitation and buries the puck. Giving the Sioux big two goal lead. Spiewak's fourth goal of the season for the assistant captain, senior from Schaumburg, Illinois. Spiewak's second power play goal of the year. 
McMahon and Hale should get the assist. David Hale at 11-14. With that goal, Bernice Sandgren of Bemidji wins a $10 Columbia Mall gift certificate in our Sioux Goal giveaway. For your chance to win, sign up at the Columbia Mall Center Court Service Center. Two nothing North Dakota. They have a 23 to four edge in shots on goal. Here's Brian Kennedy. Leads it for Genoway. A shot. Oh, Kabatov didn't see it. Still loose. Green a shot. That is wide. Green again. Engelhart. Or Degenhart can't control it. Now it's green in front. That hits a body. That's crawl. And the Badgers say enough of this and clear it down the ice. They won't get icing as Grant sends it ahead. They try to get him in a line change and filling has it go off his stick. David Hale at center. Shoots it back in. Retrieving is Eric Jensen. Ryan Hale gives him a bump. McMahon checking his man. Carrying on Rennie Bork, number 23. Shot hits David Hale's stick, and it's batted out by Schneider. Fahey continues the play, holding it in, but David Hale clears it. No icing here as Tom Gilbert is back. Brian Fahey, the senior from Glenview, Illinois, ahead to Bork. Across, Gilbert eludes one man. Gilbert tried to center it to Levitt. Shot hit the side of the net. Brandt was there with the stick. Ryan Hale overskated it. Sue look a little tired here. Perfect. Can't get it out. Holding it in is Jensen. And it's poked away by Perfect. He won't get to it. Fahey will beat him. Back into the Sioux end. It's Schneider. Out to the center ice area, and the Sioux are making a change. Parisi could not touch the puck. David Hale back out again. Loose puck. Too it's many, whistled. Too many men on the ice. Too many men on the ice. 6.20 to go, and we'll be back on DAZ. Stay with us during the Drummer's Diesel second intermission for Sioux Ticket Trivia, sponsored by Polar Communications. Answer our question correctly, and you could win two tickets to a future Sioux home hockey game. That's Sioux Ticket Trivia between the second and third periods. Mark Jackson is back in the box, serving a bench miner for too many men on the ice. Time of the penalty, 1340. So North Dakota already two of four on the power play tonight with its fifth chance. Mason and Spiewak have those power play goals. And we've got a held puck, 129 to go on the Wisconsin minor. Well, it, the Sioux almost had one called nice. against them. If Parisi had touched that puck, yeah. And you, you it, made the astute call when UND was caught in the line change. Parisi didn't touch the puck, and you were correct on the call. And a few minutes later, you were correct on the call. <laughs> <laughs> Off the draw, Parisi back to Lundbaum. That hits a stick on the way in. Now Parisi. Mason can't poke it in. Back to Lundbaum, putting it wide. Schneider. To Parisi with 1.11 to go on the Wisconsin penalty, and A.J. Degenhart clears it all the way down. And the Badgers send out four fresh players. The Sioux also sending out some fresh troops off the bench. Here's David Hale across. Intercepted by Nick Lacari as they were looking for McMahon. Our second intermission guest will be David Christian, former Sioux and former 1980 U.S. Olympian. Well, the Badgers, so far so good. They're down to 34 seconds on this penalty. 26 to 5, the Sioux leading in shots on goal, out shooting the Badgers 7 4 in the period. Norderman. And that winds up in the seats. 21 seconds to go on the Sioux man advantage. Well, you have to give uh, credit to the Badgers there, Pat. They've done a nice job killing the penalties this weekend. 
You know, Dean Blaze was saying it's it's tough to play against this Mike Eves team because they play more of an NHL style. But he, he he said they were more offensive last night than I thought they would be. And Dean says Wisconsin is a very dangerous team once they break out. Look out. 11 seconds to go on the Sioux power play. Fuhr fakes it over to David Hale. Tough angle. Off a stick and into the seats on the near side with four seconds left on the bench minor to the Badgers. Now when you have six freshmen in the lineup tonight like Wisconsin does have, you know, you look for a year or so down the road, Wisconsin's going to be a team to reckon with. You know, they're just like uh, Anchorage, same way. You can't, it's, it's difficult to be successful consistently at this level of college hockey with, with that many freshmen. Jones's shot is deflected and it goes wide. The Wisconsin penalty is over. Here is Brian Kennedy trying to stuff it in and it goes right through the crease. Green can't hold it in for the Sioux and it trickles all the way back for Matt Jones. At center, Pete Talapas puts it across. It would have been offside had a Badger player touched it. Now they tag up. Heisler will get to it. But taking it is Colby Genoway, number 29. Stopping it at the line, Fahey. Hits a Sioux stick. That's green. Down goes Joe Simon as the Badgers try to buzz. Well, that's Ryan McMurchy, excuse me, number 19, not 18. Loose puck. Here's Talifus a shot. That's blocked, and it comes right back to Brandt. 322 to go. This is WCHA hockey. Well, UND had Matt Jones and Kobe Genoway down the corner fighting for the puck. And unfortunately, the puck popped right out in the slide area, right on the stick of the Wisconsin player who gets a good shot upon Jake Brandt and forcing him to make a good save. That's Wisconsin's sixth shot of the game. Wow. 26 to 6. But the Sioux have only got a 2 0 lead. Wisconsin certainly not out of it at this point. You know who really wants to see goals are the contestants in our Sioux goal giveaway. That shot hits a Badger stick and goes up into the seat, stopping the clock with 2.50 left. Don't forget, after tonight's game, stay with us for the post-game show with Scott Hennon, sponsored by Valley Truck Parts and Service. Tonight, Scott has many guests scheduled, among them Governor John Hoven, who gave Tom Clifford that Rough Rider Award today. Three generations of Marvins, Cal Marvin, Izzy Marvin, and Lee Marvin, all associated with Sioux Hockey. Dr. Bob May and Peter Gaisley from the 1959 National Championship team, Bob May being the coach. Sioux coach Dean plays and Sioux players will join Scott Hennon as well. Here's Winchester. Off to Eichelberger now. McMahon brings it all the way down the ice and this will be icing. With 224 left, I I almost destroyed your <laughs> Wisconsin lineup. I I thought it was just an old piece of scratch paper, and I was crumpling it up. I'm sorry there. Yeah, yeah, let me let me iron look. that out for you. Well, good look at <laughs> assistant referee Rick Looker, who's new into the WCHA this season. Came from the East Coast League and has refereed a lot of games. You now living in Bemidji, running a the new rank in Bemidji, Minnesota. You're going to see him wearing the red band on his arms uh, in years to come. Crawl with a long drive, hits something on the way. Brad Winchester, number eight down in the corner, the son of former Badger Gary Winchester. Now it's Rory McMahon back of the net from Purdue, Saskatchewan. This will go down the ice. Kabatov comes out, puts it right into perfect. Kabatov has to scurry back. Teams were in a line chain. Bochensky with it now. Off to Parisi. Parisi trying to get it to Bochensky. And that was broken up smartly by John Eichelberger. Here come the Badgers. Shot put wide. 
And Gilbert trying to fight for it. He can't hold it in. Here's Norderman breaking in. Long drive and a goal! Jason Norderman! 3 nothing Sue. Well, Norderman isn't snake bit anymore. Just flying down the ice, gets a good cross ring pass by Breezy. Winds up with the bullet, blowing it right behind Kabatov, feeding him to the glove side. We have to give uh, Norderman a lot of credit. Consistency and persistency pays off. Letting Norderman score the fifth goal of the season, but boy, nice pass by Freezy springing, springing Norderman open. Cross ice pass. Time of the goal, 18:34, and with that goal, Kim Weiner or Weiner of Walhalla wins a $10 Columbia Mall gift certificate in our Sioux goal giveaway. For your chance to win, sign up at the Columbia Mall Center Court Service Center. Here's another break for the Sioux. Bochetsky back from Noderman. Shot deflected wide. Less than a minute to go. Here's Parisi calling for the puck. In front to Parisi. That is stopped by Kabatov. And the Karam comes outside the line. Sioux women's basketball team beat Southwest State tonight 86 to 74. North Dakota now 2-0. Some revenge against the team that eliminated the Sioux in last year's postseason. Gilbert, Mason, Norderman all in there. Finally a held puck with 20.8 seconds to go. Well, you have to be excited for Jason Norderman, number 26, in the Sioux jersey. Playing with a couple good line mates. Hey, if he keeps putting the puck in the net, he'll be on that line all year long. Hey, nobody's better than Scott Hannon on this announcement. Huh? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, here's Scott Hannon. I don't know how many years he's been doing it. I know Dave Beach did it up until uh, he passed away in 1986. So it was sometime after that. I think they had a, a number of guys doing it for a while. Jim Hanley and Mark Rickson among them. But Scott Hennon has certainly made his mark there. It's like he's orchestrating the crowd. A lot of fans <laughs> say the names with him. Three seconds to go. A long shot off the stick of Kabatov, and that'll do it for period two. And look out. We've got Crawl back of the net. Trying to give a facial to David Lundbaum. Crawl lost his helmet. The officials come over to the near side. They had another possible flare up there. Tom Sawatsky was drawing with the, I think it was uh, Andy Schneider as Mike Eaves. Looks very concerned. He could use uh, his sons right about now. I think his, his son Patrick is a freshman forward for Boston College, leads that team in scoring. He's got another son, Ben, who's a junior on Boston College. He's the number two scorer on that team, but a heck of a lot of good that's doing him now. Three nothing, Sue. <laughs> I don't mean to make light of it, but boy, they, you know, the keys to the game for Wisconsin score, score goals, score, score goals. Score. They haven't done it yet. Well, you know, you feel for him. You feel for him, but hey, Fortunately for the Sioux tonight, they're up three to zero over Wisconsin, one of the top teams in the WCHA. Spiewak got a power play goal at 11:14 from Roy McMahon and David Hale, and then Noderman got his fifth of the year from Zach Parisi at 18:34. Three nothing, North Dakota, and we'll be back with our second intermission Sioux ticket trivia plus an interview with David Christian. That's next as Sioux hockey continues on WDAZ. Dakota three Wisconsin nothing after two periods we we're joking with David Christian there at the end I said that's got to be the first interview you've done where no one asked you about the 1980 <laughs> Olympics but we've talked about uh, the, that great uh, miracle on ice team many times before with David 
Now let's talk about this game as North Dakota scored two goals in that second period starting at 11 14 a power play goal Kevin Spiewak from Rory McMahon and David Hale. Well they made it look simple give and go back to the uh, down the along the boards back to the point David Hale waits long enough to allow, allow the confusion in front good tip by Rory McMahon and again Spiewak Johnny on the spot right where he should be stick on the ice scoring his fourth goal of the season nice power play goal for the Sioux made it look simple. Then at 18 34 Jason Noterman finally cracks the scoring column his fifth from Parisi. Boy, you have to like this goal for Jason Noterman shooting the puck quantity times this weekend and finally was able to blow a nice slap shot right on the from the top of the circle, beating Cabotat to the glove side. So Noterman, that was the uh, first even strength goal of this game as James Mason and Kevin Spiewak each had power play goals. North Dakota wound up, let's see, two of five on the power play through two periods. Wisconsin is 0 of 2. We didn't give you the shots after the second period. North Dakota had 11 for a two period total of 30. Wisconsin had five for a two period total of six. So if goals are the key, the Badgers will have to find a way to put some more rubber on Mr. Brandt. Well, you can't give up. You know, if, if, a, if a puck is going to go in on Jake Brandt this weekend, from, from you know how well he's been playing. It's going to be one of those goals like you when he scored last night where it ricocheted and bounced off a couple people. You're only going to get those type of goals by big, digging down, finding your heart, getting out there and working as hard as you can. You know, if I was uh, Coach Eves right now, I would say, hey, listen, boys, let's go out and win this period. We have another weekend coming up. Let's just get out, win this period, get some shots on net, crash the net for rebounds, and try to make something good happen. They just want to get out of here with a goal at this point. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the win will come later if, if they get one goal, but uh, they are now looking at five straight periods in Grand Forks with a zero on the board. So we'll see if the Sioux can polish off a sweep of the Badgers as the third period gets underway when we come back on WDAZ. with more Sioux hockey next week on cable on the Fighting Sioux Sports Network as Mankato comes to town Friday and Saturday nights at 7 o'clock. That's Channel 23 in the Greater Grand Forks area, Channel 6 in Devil's Lake. And our next Sioux hockey game here on WDAZ will be Friday, December 6th at 7 o'clock against St. Cloud State. We'll have five more telecasts coming your way on WDAZ this year. We'll also have the series at Colorado College and the home series at the end of the year with Minnesota Duluth. Every Sioux home game is on television, either on WDAZ or the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. Spiewak right in, and Kabatov makes the save. Some of the Sioux are raising their sticks, but it is not a goal. Boy, it's Spiewak just put on a full head of steam when flying down right beyond the defenseman for the batters and got a good shot upon Kabatov. If you look on the Sioux roster, you not only see strength and height, but you see speed, speed like that, where Spiewak can just break loose, uh, just outskated the defenseman for the Badgers. And Kabatov loves that one off the draw. As we have a stop and start third period here, 17 seconds have been played. North Dakota has yet to lose a game this season with a lead after two. While Wisconsin has never won a game when trailing after two this season. Out of town, Duluth leads St. Cloud 4-2 at the end of two. Michigan Tech ahead of the Gophers, 1-0 going to the third. Here is A.J. Degenhart, back of the net. Sue breaking it up there with Schneider. Comes back in the net again, and Schneider tries to clear it. It finally gets behind Sawatsky. Spiewak goes down. Looks like he took an elbow from Rennie Bork. And Spiewak slow to get up, but he does go to the bench. Here is Alex Levitt. Wisconsin's leading scorer has yet to score a point this weekend. Of course, no Badgers have scored. 
Grant makes that save. Eric Jensen back to Levitt, being bugged from behind by Fuhr. Jones misses the check, and the Badgers clear it to the far side. Mason has it kicked back by Jackson. Outside it comes to Perfect. Jackson takes it right away and directs it to Fahey. Here's Jackson. Levitt sends it in. Giving Chase Ryan McMurphy number 19. Turns Matt Jones around. The sophomore carries on. Perfect lost it. Ryan Hale shoots it in. Hale, McMahon, and Perfect out there for North Dakota. Loose puck taken by Fahey. Across on the tape, it's Ryan McMurchie, a long shot. Off target, Brad Winchester takes the bump from Perfect. That puck hit the referee, Schmidt, that comes back to Fahey. Ryan Fahey firing it in and heading to the bench as Wisconsin sends out a new defensive pair. Crawl and Gilbert go out. Zach Parisi banks it to Fuhr, the Grand Fork Central product in Noterman. Over for Parisi. Here is Zach Parisi with Noterman. Parisi right around the defenseman, but Crawl caught it and took it away. Crawl stops it, gives it right up to Bochanski, and it's whistled offside as Noterman was across the line. And play is stopped with 17.25 to go. Well, I suspect you're going to see a lot of moves like Zach Parise over the next couple of years here at UND. Just going flying down the ice, be able to switch speeds. Ice, you know, freezes the defenseman. The defensemen don't know what to do. And, well, you talk about speed. We talk about speed whack with speed. Parise, likewise. Both those guys can just fly up and down the ice. This will be a fun year, no question about it. North Dakota's goals tonight from James Mason, Kevin Spiewak, and Jason Noterman. Genoway takes it and starts the Sioux back, but filling was across the line before the puck, and that is offside. You know, you talk about this year going to be a fun year. If you look back at the history of UND hockey, Pat, I know you know this, there's only one other team in the history of UND hockey that has had a better start. This is UND's second best start in the history of uh, UND hockey. A lot to say about this team. Play whistled offside again by Kyle Bergren. He's 17.09 to go. Well, the only season in which UND had a better start was 1952-53. The Sioux were 13 and 0, and then they lost three in a row. And of course, as we've said, the 86-87 team also started 10 and 1 as did this year's edition of the Sioux. Sioux bring it in, but Mace, or Kennedy having trouble with it. Kabatov couldn't control it. Shot back in by North Dakota's Fewer. After it is filling, Crawl is there. He's sandwiched by filling and Kennedy. Genoa can't control it. Talifus clears it out to Gilbert. Tom Gilbert puts it on as the Badgers make a change on the fly. Rink wide pass, and Mason was just coming off the bench and couldn't catch up to it. The post game show with Scott Hennon follows this game, and then you'll see WDAZ News at 10. That is for those of you watching on WDAZ, Channel 8, Devils Lake, Grand Forks. Our cable viewers will not see the WDAZ news at 10. Lundbaum clears it out. Jones a shot deflected high and wide. Lundbaum leaves it for Mason. Mason with Sawatsky on him. Mason on his knees to Lundbaum. He's pinned by Sawatsky, carrying away Mason, and he couldn't weave in. It was broken up by Eichelberger. Rennie Bork taps it outside the line. And Wisconsin wants to change personnel here, and so do the Sioux. Five fresh North Dakota players come onto the ice as Bork takes a hit from Ryan Hale, and that sends him staggering. Bork heads to the bench to complete the change. Oh, here's a chance. Perfect catching up. Mike Perfect in on goal. He shoots, and Kavanaugh has he lost the rebound, and Hale couldn't put it in. Ryan Hale right there. Loose puck, here's Gilbert. Ahead, it's Jensen now. Oh, he's flattened by David Hale. 
Hale and Hale throwing their weight around. Picked off David Hale. Ahead to Perfect. Fighting off Gilbert. Down he goes. Jackson clears it ahead. Jake Heisler, the junior from Bloomington, has it broken up by Schneider, and here's Ryan Hale. To Rory McMahon. Long shot, perfect, is blocked right in front of him by John Crawl. And it's back for Ryan McMurchie, the freshman from Regina. Crawl got crossed up. Crazy now. Back to Matt, or Chris Lineweber, who's out. Here's Zach Parisi, wrapped up by McMurchie. A loose puck, it'll come to Tom Sawatsky. Off the boards, picking it up. Lineweber, a shot wide of the mark. It'll come outside the line, Fuhr. Too far for Lineweber, and Lakari backhands it in, but he takes a tumble on a collision with Lineweber, and the crowd loves that. Noterman. Eludes a defender. Here's Bochensky. He's hit hard by Jackson, but Bochensky stays on his skates. Jackson clears it back to his own line for Fahey. Non-stop play here at Engelstead Arena. Sue and the Badgers on WDAZ. Fahey holding it. Another lost stick out there. Whoa! Oh! Lineweber just got blindsided by Joe Simon, and no penalty was called. Kennedy being hooked by Fahey in the crowd, calling for another penalty. Nothing happens. Play goes on. Jackson now with Kennedy. Down goes Jackson. They're letting him play. 12.55 to go. You're watching the Sioux on DAZ. During the break, Mark Jackson, as the shot comes in on Kavitoff from Jones, Jackson took a little shove at filling, I believe, and nothing was called. And now the thing you worry about here, Jeff, is as Wisconsin's frustration grows and they don't call anything, that it'll get more chippy. Well, the only thing I think, uh, you know, we and the viewers have to to prevent that is, you know, I was busy with Mike Schmidt after the game last night, the official who said, you know, the difference between Mike Eaves and most coaches that he's seen in, in college hockey is he did not allow his players to get chipping. He constantly was on the bench telling them to knock it off and play the game, and hopefully, uh, you know, they'll adhere to what his, their coach's desires are and not get involved in that kind of play. Let, let us hope so. But it's still the Sioux and the Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a chance. Oh, whoa, Winchester puts it in front, and they score! Tom Gilbert finally gets Wisconsin's first goal of the series. Now, yeah. takes the freshman defenseman, the second leading goal scorer for the Wisconsin Badgers team, to give the Wisconsin team the first goal in the last four games. Excuse me, their fourth goal in the last four games. Tip in shot right over the shoulder of Jake Brandt. Hey, in the history of the Wisconsin Badger team, they've never been shut out two games in a row. And be a tough feat if you need to have done that tonight. But hey, scores three to one. They're not out of it yet. That's Tom Gilbert's third goal of the season. I've got him for second goal. We'll uh, we'll double check on that. <laughs> But it is a Wisconsin goal at 735, making it 3-1 to one North Dakota. So Jake Brandt's shutout streak ends. As the Sioux have a chance in front, and McMahon triggered it to Hale, and it wouldn't go in. McMahon puts it right back on Kabatov. We'll take a break on DAZ. Well, another nice scoring opportunity by number 10, Rory McMahon backhands a pass. The Sioux player crashing the net hard. Captain Ryan Hale trying to get the rebound. Tom Gilbert gets the goal assisted by Rennie Bork at 7.35. I think that is his second goal. I've got I did find a list that says it's his third goal and another that are two other lists that say it's his second. So the vote is two to one. <laughs> Maybe we can double check on that later with the Wisconsin 
Sports information officials. Julie Kluge is here. Wisconsin doesn't care what number it is. It's a big one on the board for the Badgers. So they will get at least one goal out of this series and a lot of time left. You're watching the Sioux on WDAZ, Devils Lake Grand Forks. Here come the Badgers with Tom Sawatsky. And we've got a penalty coming up against North Dakota. A slashing call at 9.05. That was a good call. Boy, you could hear it up here. Norman just two-handed the Wisconsin player carrying the puck. And take a look here. Well, that's the end result of it. It's a good call. Just going to say, make sure UND stays out of the sin bin. Don't give any opportunities for Wisconsin to get back in this game. And boy, 10 minutes, 55 seconds now remaining in the third period. Wisconsin's definitely not out of this game. Hey, Pat, you see a little fire now Wisconsin has? Oh, yeah. We've thus far, they're winning this period. Wisconsin, 0 of 2 on the power play tonight, and that goal by Gilbert ended Jake Brandt's scoreless streak at 177 minutes and 10 seconds. That includes two, two full games and parts of two others. Jackson, as it hits something in front, cleared by North Dakota's McMahon. Rory McMahon and Ryan Hale up front, the penalty killers for North Dakota. Wisconsin has Ryan McMurchy out there. Rennie Bork, Alex Levitt, Tom Gilbert, and Mark Jackson at the points. Hale can't break it up at the line. Sue cleared around. Jackson pinching in. Bouncing puck. And it's sent back for Bork. Jones taps it around him. Levitt shovels it out to Jackson. A minute eight to go on the Noterman penalty. Badgers with one of the lowest, well, the lowest power play in the WCHA. Only one power play goal in league competition so far this season. In front it comes, Ryan Hale banks it off Gilbert, and it's outside the line. And both teams will take the opportunity to send out some fresh players. It's Alex Levitt waiting for some teammates. Over here for Eichelberger, it's behind him. Sawatsky plays it back for Jensen. Lundbaum causing some trouble down there. And it's outside the line. Gilbert can't fire it back in. Jensen coughs it right up to Lundbaum. Hits the skates of Eichelberger. Jensen is bumped by Lundbaum, and it's fired back by Schneider. Sent in by Wisconsin's Winchester. Ten seconds to go on the penalty to Norderman. As the Sioux clear it down, that is Schneider. And that should do it. Three seconds, two, one, and Norderman is out of the box. In the WDAZ Memorial penalty box. Here is Fahey. And that doesn't connect. Outside it comes. Parisi lofts it in. Bochensky tried to set it up for Norderman. Broken up by the Badgers. And here comes Jake Heisler. Sure gives him a run. Wisconsin in a line change here. Hustling after it is Crawl keeping it in. In front it comes Grant, the strong save, and they score on the rebound. Nick Lakari. suddenly the Badgers are within one. Well, like we said, the, keep it simple for Wisconsin to come out and win the third period, get a goal, and get some momentum. And boy, 11th shot from the Badgers. Lasari scoring his third goal this season. Brent giving up a rebound. Not typical of him over the last several games, but he did. The Lasari was right there on the doorstep to pop in this third goal of the season. Freshman from Duluth, Minnesota. Nick Lakari, all of his points this year have been goals, all three of them. And now Sioux coach Dean Blaze is calling timeout with 8.22 to go. And we'll take timeout as well. You're watching the Sioux on WDAZ and the Fighting Sioux Sports Network. After the third period, we will select the player of the game. 
sponsored by PS Doors. And after the game, we'll select the save of the game, sponsored by Rydell Auto Center. <laughs> there they are, Mark Kauk and Terry Gretzky Hychek. <laughs> we, we, we can't have a game without them. In fact, we hold up the game waiting for them to attend every game. No, they're here way before anybody else, believe me. So we'll see if Gene Blaze's timeout settles things down here for North Dakota. Shots are even in the third period. Five and five, but the Sioux still have the edge 35 to 11. But North Dakota had a 3-0 lead coming into this period, and suddenly it's 3-2 on Wisconsin goals by Tom Gilbert and Nick Lakari. John Crawl getting the lone assist on Lakari's goal. Here is Heisler, losing it to Lundbaum. Crawl tried to dive and keep it in to no avail. Minnesota now has a 2-1 lead on Michigan Tech in the third. Duluth ahead of St. Cloud, 4-2 in the third. Seven minutes left in both of those games. And this game, just about the same. Almost seven minutes left here. Funny how it all works out. Fahey trying to hold it in. He can't. Genoway runs him. Here's a chance. Two on one. Genoway drops it and puts it. Did that hit the post, Jeffrey? Well, I don't know, but that was a nice give and go wow. play. Off the stick of Brandt. I just hope UND doesn't have to look back at this yeah. at seven minutes from now and say, boy, that one should have gone in. Well, Wisconsin has sure quieted this crowd. Jones exchanging, look at this, Jones and McMurchie. Well, bump, bump, bump. Hey, these teams don't like each other. They respect them. But boy, when they're on the ice, uh, it's nothing but, uh, hey, look at this good give and go right here. One-timer. Quinn failing misses, boy, shot up so fast, I didn't see the puck. Neither, but neither I do got did my I. My focals on, though, too, so I <laughs> have a hard time adjusting. I didn't. I couldn't tell if that hit the post or, or where it went, but it did not go in, and that's all the suit care. Oh, look at McMurchie with the elbow to perfect. And the officials are... Mike Schmidt comes over to have a word with them, and they toss Winchester out of the draw. Here's McMurchie. Well, you have to uh, brag about the cameraman again. Boy, they got the best in the country right here. Marv Leyer, I think, is down there. Getting that shot for you. We'll bring this back on icing with 6.19 to go. You know, Pat, that statement is, uh, is is not made in puffing. We, WDAZ, WDAY, have, boy, for years been putting on the broadcast and have a lot of experienced uh, producers, technicians, whatever, cameramen that do a fantastic job. Thank you. The checks in and the you mail. too. The checks in the mail. <laughs> we we are oh, eleven thousand four twenty six. The attendance one one four two six. We uh, we think we put on a good show, and we hope you agree at home. Six minutes left in regulation time. Ryan Hale had McMahon in front. Here's a chance for the Badgers. Three on two, four on two. And another penalty coming up here against the Sioux. 5.46 to go. We'll tell you about it when we come back on WDAZ. After tonight's game, be with us for the post-game show with Scott Hennon, sponsored by Valley Truck Parts and Service. Tonight, John, Scott's guests are Governor John Hoven, Cal Marvin, Izzy Marvin, Lee Marvin, Bob May, Peter Gaisley, Dean Blaze, and some of his players. Now, they're still discussing the penalty here. The Wisconsin penalty box is open. What was unusual, Jeff, about that is...
Kabatov left the Badger goal. Like I can tell you right now, Schmidt is telling him, get in the box. We're going to be another two-minute penalty for delay of game. Too many men on the ice as they called it. Their second such penalty tonight. And Rennie Bork goes in. And Dean Blaze was putting his arms out as if to say, where's the delay of game call? Because they, they were very slow, Wisconsin, to send anyone over. So a big chance for the Sioux to get some insurance. Wheeling in Schneider, a long drive. Kabatov got a good look at that and hangs on with 144 left on the Wisconsin bench minor. Pat, you said it right, get some insurance with momentum. That Wisconsin has really had, really been dominating this game, picking up the pace and the physical play over the last 10 minutes. And boy, just this uh, power play opportunity alone is gonna break that momentum. But boy, I don't think we're looking at breaking momentum as trying to get the insurance goal here. Five minutes, 29 seconds now remaining in the third period. Lundbaum fakes it, sends it down to Bochensky, turns and just misses the post. Big jam up, the Badgers clear it outside, and it's brought back in offside by Schneider, who is jawing there with Big Winchester. Or is that Eichelberger, excuse me? Winchester, I, I get eight and nine mixed up. Winchester's coming out now. There's Ryan McMurchy. Boy, you can see the effect of this game on him. It's been physical, especially in this third period. Everybody catching their breath here for the final 508. Kevin Spiewak, whoa, sent flying by Jackson. Norderman picks it up. Intercepted by Jackson. Fewer tries to hold it in. Broken up by Winchester. Here's Degenhardt coming in. Short-handed, a long shot. Grant will glove it as Degenhardt was coming in. Well, I think UND needs to be careful here. Pat, if, if, uh, if Mike Eves had any influence on Mike Schmidt, there may, there may be an even-up call here. You don't want to give... Uh, Schmitty that opportunity, just keep it clean. Bochinski sends Levitt to the ice. Play goes on, Parisi fighting off a check from Fahey. Most the fans don't like that. Bochinski to Lundbaum, puts it wide. 37 seconds to go on the Sioux power play. It'll come back to Zach Parisi. Now Schneider. He'll take it, and that is in Lakari's Equipment, I think. <laughs> well, the Badgers are going to get called for is. another one. Cross-checking against Parisi in the corner. 24 seconds uh, remaining in the first penalty. Give UND a five-on-three opportunity for 24 seconds. But more importantly, with four minutes, nine seconds now remaining in the third period, half of the remaining part of this game, you, the Badgers will be shorthanded. Hey. Talk about insurance, Pat. This is a good opportunity for UND to put this game away. No doubt about that. Levitt goes in at 15-51. Cross-checking. 20 seconds left on the two-man advantage. Schneider to Bochensky. Out to the open man, Lundbaum. Parisi hits the side of the net. And I think he hit the stick of Kabatov first. Here's Lundbaum. Puts it through Mason. Six seconds left on the two-man advantage. Parisi walking right in. Now he'll set up again. The first penalty is over. It's a five-on-four now. Schneider sends it wide. Parisi after it. Lundbaum trying to put it into Mason. It's broken up. Holding it in. Lundbaum walking in. He shoots. Kabatov has it. And he looked behind him. <laughs> wow. Wade. David Lumbum with a big blast right here. Watch him sneak in, sneak in here, trying to see how far the Badgers will allow him to go in and get just a rocket, and Kabatov comes up with the big save. Put that glove boy, back just... there to make sure it didn't trickle through. <laughs> oh, boy. David Lumbum, the 
junior from Roseau, Minnesota. You're a shot to flex just wide. A minute 13 to go. On the penalty to Levitt. North Dakota by my count, two of six on the power play is that one just misses with Noterman camped on the doorstep. David Hale gingerly plays it into the corner. Noterman lost his stick. Now he grabs it. Squirts loose to Hale. Now McMahon. One timer by Fuhr blocked right in front of him by John Eichelberger who lost his stick. Here's McMahon with Norderman breaking in. McMahon a tough angle shot. Whoa! Crashing in is Norderman with Crawl behind him. Play stops with 31 seconds to go on the penalty. Boy, Crawl, as you say, just nice. Look at that give and go right at the blue line. Creating a good transition scoring opportunity and Norderman crashing the net hard in. Crawl just lifts him up and puts him into the crossbar. Describe Noterman as a spark plug out there. Always going 100 miles an hour. Just a good, hard working player. Senior from Rochester, Minnesota. He's had a good career here at University of North Dakota. Sure has. 20 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty. Lundbaum fakes now to Parisi. Lundbaum a one timer, hits traffic. Kabatov pounces on that one. Well, there's Crowell again. Yep. Trying to get James Mason out of the slot area. Nice and one-timer again by Lundbaum. Look at the traffic in front looking for the rebound. And boom, right there. Another one. Yeah, Virgil would be proud of that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Virgil Hill, who won his IBC Cruiserweight title fight here in this very arena last Sunday. Wisconsin did not have a player ready to take the face off. They dropped the puck anyway, but Mike Schmidt, I think, is saying Kabatov wasn't ready and made some equipment repair. Well, Uni needs to be heads up here. 12 seconds remaining in the power play. Make sure that Badger player goes into the defensive zone, doesn't sneak out for a good breakaway or two on one opportunity. Parisi blocked by Gilbert, and the Wisconsin penalty is over. Levitt comes back as. Brant sprawls to make that save with 206 to go. And we get to the moment in time where we kind of watch that Wisconsin goal again to see if Kabatov will be pulled as Baron Brookler was last night in an effort to tie the game. Boy, you look at the shots, Pat. 41 for UND, 13 for the for the Badgers, and it just goes to show it doesn't matter how many opportunities you have, it's put in the net that counts. Back to get it, Jackson, Ryan Hale crashes with him. Levitt can't dig it loose. It comes to Rory McMahon. Now Hale turns and puts it on goal off the stick of Scott Cabotov. Fahey controls it. Wisconsin has the only goals of this third period. That puck hit the official, and it's a break for the Sioux as McMahon Fires it right back in. At center, Rennie Bork shoots it in, and Wisconsin will make a wholesale change here. You hear the fans turning up the volume. Kabatov still in the Badger net as we approach the final minute of regulation. Play stops with 53.2 seconds left, and they'll face it offside the or outside the uh, North Dakota line. And Kabatov stays in the Badger net with the face off outside the North Dakota zone. 50 seconds to go, and this will be icing, and we may see Kabatov get pulled right here. Boy, that's not the play you no. want to make. Nope. 
I know Schneider was trying to bounce it off the glass. They just took the, a bad carom. Wisconsin calls time. Badgers got their first WCHA win one week ago tonight in overtime at Minnesota Duluth. But they have lost four of their last five games. And you got to say this about North Dakota. Jake Brant's back to back shutouts were impressive enough. It's awfully, awfully tough to get three in a row. In fact, only one Sioux goalie has ever gotten that many. And he got four in a row. Spike Schultz back in 1954. That's how tough that is. There are the shots on goal. Wisconsin with two goals on 13 shots. And the Sioux have won 10. They lost one when they outshoot the opponent. There is Scott Kabatoff on the Badger bench. Play face-offs are always important, especially right now. Held in by Gilbert. Wisconsin has Eichelberger and Levitt out there. Along with Jackson and Gilbert. Along with Nick Lacari. Here's Winchester. He spun around. Buck flips. Winchester tries to throw his weight into somebody. Gilbert hustling after it. It's cleared by Schneider into the penalty box. 18 seconds to go. Well, another big important faceoff. With 18 seconds remaining in this game, nursing a one-goal lead. Boy, winning the draw, getting down the ice will, for the most part, allow the clock to tick off the remaining seconds in this game. McMahon and Eichelberger on the draw. It comes back to Schneider. And the Sioux clear it. It'll be tough now. The Badgers really have to hurry. Five seconds. Three seconds. Grant <laughs> makes the save. That's the game. The Sioux sweep Wisconsin with a 3-2 victory. Boy, when you look back over the past, what, year or so, Wisconsin. Nine victories, ten losses, and two ties since January 19, 2001. That's when on the road. So they... For the past uh, year now, year and a half, Wisconsin has really struggled playing game, games on the road. But boy, good victory for UND tonight. And it's time now for our player of the game sponsored by PS Doors. Who is it, my friend, Mr. Bradoff? Boy, the Rocket Man, Jason Norderman, <laughs> just blowing a shot right by Kabatov. That goal right there is the game winner. Jason Noterman's fifth of the season, and he is our PS Doors player of the game. This is the first time the Sioux have swept back-to-back -back WCHA series since 2001 when they swept St. Cloud January 26th and 27th, and then swept Duluth February 2nd and 3rd. And there is a very yes. happy Jason Noterman. Well, you can't uh, impress upon it enough, Pat, about getting the game-winning goal. Hey, goals are important, but anytime you can put one in the net that eventually ends up being the winner for the for the team, that's important. And boy, PS Door player of the game, you can't say enough about Jason Norderman. And boy, the Sioux get a nice ovation as they leave the ice. And one other important thing, Jeff, they've won every game so far, the first four in this 14-game homestand. And that, you know, that was a an important thing that Dean Blaze tried to stress upon his players was the fact that. Last year, there were so many bells and whistles and, you know, new things about the arena. They want to make this arena their own, and they're certainly doing that in the early going. You know, the benefit of playing all those games at home, obviously, is playing in this facility in front of these many people. But, you know, if you don't take advantage of the, the, the opportunities of playing your home rink, 
after Christmas, when you got the vast majority of games thereafter on the road, boy, if you don't take the advantage of those opportunities now, you're going to be struggling and putting a lot of pressure on the team after Christmas and after the start of the new year. North Dakota now 11 and 1, 5 and 1 on the WCHA. They have 10 points. And if Duluth hangs on to beat St. Cloud State, and depending upon what Denver does later tonight, North Dakota uh, could be as high as second place. Right now they are tied with Denver with 10 points. Well, we just got a final now. Minnesota Duluth did beat St. Cloud. So Duluth and North Dakota. Well, Minnesota beat Tech two to one. So <laughs> North Dakota, Minnesota, and Minnesota Duluth all have 10 points temporarily tied with second place Denver, which plays at Alaska Anchorage late tonight. Shots on goal in the third. North Dakota 12, Wisconsin 8. So North Dakota finishes with 42 shots on goal to Wisconsin's 14. The final score is North Dakota 3 and Wisconsin 2, and we will be back with some final thoughts right after this.